welcome today to today's dedication. Uh, to begin our uh, dedication ceremonies this morning, I would like to introduce Private Joseph Dawson. Uh, Private Dawson is one of our students. He is currently enrolled in the Army National Guard, and he will be gra graduating this year. So, Private Dawson, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. At this time, I would like to introduce the superintendent of schools, as you know, Dr. Jim Rollins is superintendent of Springdale Schools, and uh, Dr. Rollins. I had an opportunity to visit with Mr. Archer and his family just a few minutes ago, and I think he understands, just as we understand, how important this day is, how important this uh, event is, and I want to welcome each of you uh, to come and to be a part of what I think will be uh, something we will all remember for many, many years. Our Springdale School System has a guiding theme, and it has been in place for many, many years, and that's teach them all. And all means all, every child in our school system. And what we're recognizing here today, what we're honoring here today, is the effort on the part of our Springdale school system, especially our Springdale school board and our teachers and administrators who are absolutely committed to teaching all children. And when you have partners like the Archer family when you have examples like the one that Mr. John Archer and Velma Archer set for us over time, you understand that that vision and that mission really gives support and structure and makes that goal a reality. So I want to welcome everyone and thank you for being here today. Let me start this way. Uh, students, we're all here for you. This program was developed for you. The work of our teachers was developed for each of you. And this is part of the vision that Mr. Archer has had in front of the school system, uh, system for years and years. We have student representatives here this morning. Uh, we are serving about 460 kids in our alternative high school. That number will grow in time to about 600 kids and with the growth that we've had in the district, Mr. Archer, that may be sooner than later. So we're very, very glad uh, to see this dedicated today. I'd like to ask our students to stand, and if you would, I'd like for this group to recognize them. <clears throat> Thank you all. I'd just like to really remind everyone uh, over and over again that the work that is underway here, we think will be an example for our school system, an example for the state and uh, frankly far beyond. What we saw accomplished here last year was absolutely phenomenal. The literacy scores of these students tripled. The mathematics scores of these students came alongside uh, any traditional high school in the area. And Mr. Greep, that's an absolute tribute to you, Mr. Eichenberger, and the staff of this school, and we all thank each of you. Let's recognize the staff. Did you do that for me? <clears throat> I know I'm speaking for <clears throat> every teacher, every principal <clears throat> in the room when I say that things like this can only happen when you have a phenomenal school board that is absolutely committed to the mission that I addressed earlier. 
Every child, each and every child is important to the school board and they are an integral part of the planning and the commitment of resources and the recruitment of great teachers to help carry out this mission. And we have board members here with us today. Ms. McFetridge, our board president, will address you in just a moment. Kathy, would you please stand? Let me introduce the other board members. Uh, Ms. Cook is here. Mr. Hutchin is, Hutchinson is here. And if we have other board members, uh, we all want to thank you. Now y'all stand and let us thank you appropriately. Uh. I especially want to thank our support team. Uh, John, we've kind of re redone this facility and we'll continue to work and work and improve it every day from this day forward. Our support team of Dr. Compton, uh, Mr. Uh, Junior Copeland, Mr. Jim Reed, uh, every member of our maintenance team, I think, our custodial team has been a part of trying to provide an environment where these kids can excel. Please thank our support team. Would you do that for us? I know we have area legislators with us today, and I'm very proud of the support that they give us. Uh, the state recognizes the importance of alternative education, a personalized education for each and every child, and we're very thankful for them. Uh, do we have uh, state and legislators with us today, or representatives from our national offices? I know that I, I saw a representative earlier. So please stand and let us thank you. Our city administrators are tremendous support uh, to our school system, our mayor, our city planners, members of our city council, and I especially want to thank our police chief for all the support that she gives us. We have a school resource officer in the building, and we're very, very proud of him. Let's thank this group as well. <laughs> our Chamber of Commerce is represented today, and we're so appreciative of them. Please thank our chamber. Will you do that for us? <laughs> this school system is steeped in partnerships. And the Jones Center for, Family is, uh, for Families is one of our greatest partners. I want to thank Mr. Clifford, who is here today. Ed, would you please stand? Mr. Mike Gilbert, who's been such a partner with us. Uh, thank you. Thank you so very, very much. We have other great partners. Northwest Technical Institute is a wonderful partner with us, as is the Ozark Guidance Center staff. And I, I would like, again, to, to, to save my final comments uh, in terms of recognizing special guests. All of us understand that great teachers make all the difference. Great teachers are making a difference in, in uh, service to these fine young people here. I want to thank every teacher, uh, every support person that we have. Please thank this teaching staff. <laughs> and just to demonstrate, I think, to everyone what a united effort, what a team effort uh, comes forward in service to our children, I think every school and our district is represented here today. Teachers and principals, thank you. Please stand and, and let us say, say thanks to you. It takes all of us. It takes every caring adult in a community to serve the children in Springdale the way we all uh, choose to do that. Like I said in my opening remarks, all means all. And Kathy, we're working diligently to accomplish that, aren't we? About 30 years ago, I had the opportunity to meet Mr. Archer. I've had the opportunity to sit with him and talk with him and travel with him and plan with him. And the, the example that he and Velma shared with us over time has touched our hearts. And it has made a difference. It's caused us to uh, examine our work at a very special level hopefully every every day and members of this Archer family and you can see it is a family Susan we've walked a lot of halls together haven't we and thought together about how to improve services and that's special and Linda we're so glad to have you here today uh, that that is for sure 
<clears throat> the archers, as I was introduced to them, lived in Springdale. They had deep roots in the community. They knew our teachers personally. Pam, they knew our teachers personally, didn't they? And they knew the needs of our kids. And like so many other great families over the years, they came forward with the most special and inviting words that a superintendent could ever hear. We want to help. That's what's made Springdale the great place that it is today. And we continue to treasure those relationships uh, with all the families that support this great school system. And the archers are exactly that kind of representative. We just want to help. They had special talents. They were in a special place in the world. Not only did they want to help personally, but they had the ability to connect other individuals from around the region, from around the United States, to support children who needed services, needed support and encouragement and love. And they have spent their lives doing that, and we're seeing that evidence here today. There are so many programs. John, I get asked from time, who is that guy? He's a very private individual. And sometimes you have to put your arm around him and bring him with you or just surprise him altogether and, and not even ask and just go forward, don't you, Sissy? He's not private in terms of his caring and he's not private in terms of his heart for kids. And he's certainly not private in terms of his advocacy with others who can help. And so John, through his efforts, the family through their efforts, have connected Springdale kids to people who wanted to help. How important is after school programming? Do y'all think that's important? Raise your hand. <coughs> See, I'm a teacher now, we've got to participate here. So our after school programming in many, many schools across the district, tutoring for kids, personal teaching and learning for kids, college scholarships for needy children, Truant officers in the school, we tried that for a while, didn't we, John? We've tried a lot of different things, some with uh, tremendous success, others that needed adjustment over time, and so you see us come back and, and tweaking those programs, et cetera. Summer enrichment camps. You know, there are children in our community who go to summer camp, and it's part of their life, and they enjoy it, et cetera, and John said, I want that for all kids. All means all. <laughs> And so what did he do? He bought a farm. He built a camp. He brought the family together around services to kids. We identified key people, and some of those key people are going to talk with you today, like Dean Alexander and Thomas Pittman and Pam Brown and others who could help deepen the roots and spread the, the influence. I got a call one day and he said, I'm really interested in these kids having hands-on experiences and learning. And he had been exposed to a program where it was construction oriented. I've just called it the hammer program over the years myself. But the idea was you bring kids together, you give them a project, and you give them the materials, you give them good uh, tutors and instructors, and they create things. They build buildings. Phenomenal program that uh, has just touched so many kids. One of the finest experiences that I think any child could hope to be a part of is the American history uh, excursion. Eighth grade kids for years and years and years, Springdale kids, but not just Springdale kids, kids from around the region and, and uh, neighboring states and beyond are taken to our nation's capital, the Jamestown settlement, Williamsburg, uh, the the tours of the Smithsonian, uh, Smithsonian Institute, the visit with our congressional leaders, uh, it's about a 10-day excursion. I had the opportunity to be a part of that once, and working in school work, I've had an opportunity to be a lot of great educational opportunities. I think it's the finest educational opportunity I've ever had, to, to walk the halls with this gentleman and his family and our kids and teachers that's phenomenal, and that's been going on for years and years and years. And I, while we're here today, <clears throat> and I think my words hopefully have conveyed it to you. 
service models have to have a great mission. mission. There has to be foundation and structure that guides that approach every day. The vision that this gentleman has shared with me and his family has shared with me over time has been at the heart of what we see here today. And it's why we're here today to dedicate this building after the archers and the archer family. And it is that mission, students, that create the programs that serve each of you. And here's our, here's our heart, here's our intent. We all know that each of you have great potential and promise. You don't just wake up one day and that become very clear to you or to any of us, but it is our hope and it is our desire and belief and it's certainly the commitment of this gentleman and this family that through these experiences, you would begin to learn more and more about who you are and to come to understand the great potential and promise that each of you have. So as I said when I started, this work is for each of you and our hearts are with you and we wish each of you the very best. Thank you. Well, good morning. It is truly an honor for me to be here with all of you this morning. Um, Mr. Archer, it's an exciting day here in, in Springdale. And um, truly, without the, the vision and the leadership of Dr. Rollins, and I know he doesn't want me to say this, but I really want us to thank him this morning because without his vision, without his leadership, we would not be here this morning. Thank you, Dr. Rollins. But I also want to thank the Archer family for this amazing partnership. It touches me every time I hear about the, all the different ways that you've helped our school district and, and really helped our children become successful citizens. And I just honor you so much. Um, it's such a treat as a school board member. We, we go out and visit schools um, different school sites all year long and it is so touching to be able to come into this building and see these students and see them work so hard and, and be successful even though there's many challenges out there for for really all of them but this environment is amazing and Mr. Greep has put a staff together that that is an incredible staff and you see them lift our students up every day and it's just amazing how they do that, but it's the dedication and the commitment and really the caring and the love that they have for our students. Uh, it was just last, last month we um, were able to visit with some of our teachers at our school board meeting, and what really impressed me the most was these three teachers came to us and really talked about how successful their students were and how they did that and it was all about relationships. And it had a huge impact on me because it was a term I heard quite often. It's about building relationships. But when those three teachers came and talked to us about how they did that, it was an awe moment for me. And Mr. Greep, I know you're doing that here every day. And we appreciate you so much. And the Archer family, congratulations. I think naming this building after you and your family is amazing and it'll help us always remember the many things that you've done for our community and our students over the years. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. McCutridge. Again, I certainly appreciate the contributions of our school board and Dr. Rollins uh, for making this program a reality. Um, I'd just like to make a few comments. Again, my name is Paul Greep, and I'm the lead administrator of the John and Velma Archer Learning Center. And again, I'm thankful for the opportunity to be part of this amazing program. I serve alongside teachers and parents and community members and other professionals who have one primary focus, and that's embracing students and preparing them for a successful career. At Archer, we're blessed with many benefits that set us aside from other schools. For example, we're a small school, 
so it prevents students from falling between the cracks. Currently, between the two campuses, here at the Lehman facility and across the street at JTL, we serve about 350 students, grades 8 through 12. And our class size is capped at 15 students, so this re allows all students to really receive individualized instruction. And as you walk through our building, you'll be able to see that technology is certainly rich here at Archer. All classrooms have Promethean boards, new computers, and other cutting-edge equipment. And again, I thank our superintendent, I thank our school board for making this a reality. Another facet of the Archer Learning Center that sets us apart are our community partners. And I want to describe some of our partners just briefly. I think about the Jones Center for Families. Mr. Clifford and Mr. Gilbert, you all have been nothing short of amazing. Over the years, our students have benefited from using the Jones Center and other programs. And it just seems like whenever we call upon you or, or Mr. Gilbert, it's, sure, we'll be glad to help. And again, thank you for our kids. Another outstanding partner that we have is, is Youth Strategies with Mr. Mike Foner. Mr. Foner has been a positive influence on in our kids for many, many years. Uh, his love and compassion and care is evident. At Youth Strategies, what our students do is that they work in a bike shop and other areas and they learn job skills and community service. And they do so while earning a paycheck. Over the past summer, our students worked uh, with Mike Gilbert, or with uh, Mr. Foner, uh, as part of the Manna Gardens at the Jones Center. And uh, this was an exciting project. Mr. Foner and his team worked with our students to analyze the current grounds, uh, design a garden and an educational area that would meet the needs of our community, and then they presented their findings to the Jones Center board. This entire project was rich in collaboration, problem solving, and true real world experience. And again, I thank Mr. Foner and I thank the Jones Center for just being rich partners with us. A third community partner that is invaluable is the First United Methodist Church. My words can't express how thankful I am to the church for what they do for our students. Each week we have a handful of our kids that go down to the church to prepare a meal. Now this isn't a simple meal. This is a meal designed to feed the entire school body. Last year we were serving about 200 kids. And when I met with Janelle and her staff about our growth, and I said that we may be growing to about 370 students, I was worried. I thought, are we gonna be able to do this? Their response, let's do it. The First United Methodist Church is on pace to serve over 10,000 meals this year alone to our kids. And again, this is done without a penny to our students. Community partners, how amazing. And when I reflect on the Archer Learning Center, we can't forget about our students. It's really here about teaching them all. Kids that attend the school do so by choice. As Dr. Rollins mentioned, our students are extremely intelligent. They have dreams of their own, and we know that they're going to be successful. But what we believe is that by combining those meaningful relationships along with good academic teaching, they can certainly go far. At the heart of Archer is personalization. As our students enter our program, we have conversations with each family and each student. We talk about their high school goals, goals, the benefits of being in a class no larger than 15 students, and our high expectations. Students enroll here because they realize that our teachers are caring and that we want for all to succeed. Each spring, we re-invite students to enroll here. And I'm proud that 80% of our students said, I want back at Archer, L Archer Learning Center. I want to re-enroll. Again, this speaks volumes of the work done by our caring teachers and staff. Over the past year, our, teacher, our students demonstrated that they're as smart as any other students in the district. Test scores exceeded state expectations. And again, that goes back to great teachers. I thank Ms. Rowland for her leadership in math. All of our English teachers coming together working with our students. I keep saying kids, but you all have demonstrated that you are problem solvers, you are extremely intelligent, and I'm glowing proud because of you. We don't only look at test scores, 
but we look at lives changed. As each of you come through, our goal is to get you to graduate and help you to connect with your future. Students that have left Archer have done so. They've gone to the military, they've gone to vocational schools, they've gone to college and the workforce. The financial impact on the Archer Learning, that the Archer Learning Center that we've had on Northwest Arkansas is great. And again, you look at the lives that have been changed, and that will certainly touch your heart. Today, I'm excited that we can officially dedicate our program in honor of John and Velma Archer. As mentioned earlier, the Archers have been long advocates of our students in helping them to reach their dreams. And their impact on Springdale has been phenomenal, and I thank you. You have a heart for students, all students, and, and really it can't be measured, and I thank you again. As we officially name and dedicate our program, I am extremely proud that it will hold the Archer name. It's a name that is equated with compassion and love. Mr. Archer and members of the Archer family, I want to thank you for believing in our kids, in their promise, and in their potential. Thank you. Because we are on two campuses and we still have school going on in the background, we're going to show you a brief four-minute video clip. And I thank Trent Jones and his crew. They've, the last couple of weeks, they've been through our building. They've done interviews. Uh, and this will give you an overview of the Archer Learning Center. The Archer Learning Center was set up to meet the needs of at-risk students particularly, but all students as well in the Springdale Public Schools. It's a program where kids can come in and have the opportunity to make up credits and get caught up, but it's also a chance, it's more than that, it's more of a chance for them to come in and get into a school where they can feel at home, where they can feel like they're a member of a family. It's a small group environment here and eventually we hope to make it a legitimate third high school in the Springdale Public Schools. A smaller place, a more sense of a community to better meet the needs of some of our students. It's a one-on-one -on -one connection with the teacher and the students. You have roughly 15 people in each class. It's a, it's a lot better than your regular schooling. You have a one-on-one -on -one connection with who's teaching you. And they actually, they teach you a lot. They don't just sit there and say, hey, you do this, and they, they actually help you. They don't let you fail. The class sizes here are extremely small. We've got about 15 kids per class. It's hard to fall between the cracks, and for a lot of our kids, it's exactly what they need. It's easier, but you learn more. The teachers actually care, and they're really nice. Everyone here is so supportive. I mean, the teachers are supportive of the other teachers. They're supportive of the students. The students help each other out. Just the high level of respect and concern for everyone's success here. To me, it's a school that allows you to have a second chance to be able to graduate, go on to bigger, better things if the general school hasn't worked out. Let's see, it's a smaller environment, so it's easier for the teachers to get to know us more and better so they can work with us. And I mean, it's smaller so we can get to know more people. It takes a special type of person to want to teach at ALE. And I believe we've got the right people here. Our goal here is to get all kids to graduate and, and to be ready for careers or if they choose to go to college, to just help kids be successful, maybe for the first time. If you're having trouble in school and you don't really like it, I think over here is like a good alternative for it. If you're having trouble at like your school or something, definitely come here because you'll get more one-on-one -on -one training and you'll probably like it a lot more. I like ALE because I think it's a great opportunity. If they're falling behind, they know that the teachers want them to succeed. The kids here, I just like working with them. If you look at it and you peel the kids apart like layer at a time, You'll, you'll see there's a decent kid in there, you know, and a lot of these kids are fun to work with once you get to know them. They're just like any other kid, you know, but you just need to make time to get to know them and let them know who you are. So we go to the House of Hope. We help serve the food to the people who can't really provide food for themselves on a daily basis. We started doing it because a -Lease, you know, people think a is a bad school for bad kids. And this is our way of reaching out and saying we're not all bad, you know. 
I love this school. It is is probably one of the greatest things that the Springdale School District has ever done. It it just it it, it shows that there's always a second chance. It shows that just because you made mistakes once, you, it, it doesn't it doesn't make your decisions for the rest of your life. If you're at a school today and the school may not be meeting the needs that you have and you would like to be in a place where you have a very small classrooms where you get a lot of individual attention, whether where you have a chance to accumulate credits at a rapid rate and have a chance to graduate from high school and be a part of a community of learners uh, that are dedicated to helping kids just like you, then the Archer Learning Center is a great place for you to look into and a great place for you to spend your high school year. If you're missing your credits, come on in. <laughs> come on by, we're welcome, welcoming you. The next part of the program was actually difficult because when you look at the names and you look at the faces of all of our kids and you think, okay, I'm gonna pick a couple, okay? I'd like to introduce, first of all, Tia Rush. Tia is uh, gonna provide a few comments, uh, Tia. Hi, I'm Tia, and I just wanna say that I am very glad to go to Archer Learning Center. Um, it has truly been a blessing ever since I came here last year from Springdale. Um, sorry, I'm just a little nervous. It's a lot of people. <laughs> but um, I started serving at the House of Hope, so I just love helping people, and that's what I want to do in the future is just help my community in any way that I can. I love Archer because it's small school, but it's just, I don't know how to explain it. It's like a family type base. Sorry. Thank you, Tia. Next, I'd like to introduce Brandon Wilson. Brandon is also a student. Brandon? Hi. Now that I came here, I actually feel a little underdressed. <laughs> I go to Archer, I am Brandon, and my school before was Harbor. And in that school, it was so big that I felt as if I wasn't a person. And now that I go to Archer, I feel like I'm wanted here. As Mr. Greep says, we are all hand-selected to be here, and I feel like I am wanted here. And after this, I actually thought about becoming a teacher and teaching for Archer because I like it that much. This school system has really had a really great impact on me. Another young lady that I've known for years and I'm extremely proud of is Ziamara Aguilar. Ziamara, are you? <laughs> Hello, good morning everyone. My name is Ziamara Aguilar and I last attended um, Southwest Junior High and I'm a single mother and the fact of being here, um, you know, Motivate, motivates me because, you know, just because you made a mistake once doesn't mean you have to give up. And I feel like this, this school is a place where you can take second chances. And it's amazing, you know, the fact that your teachers are always there for you. And the school size, you know, the classes are very small. And you feel like you learn more. It's very nice. And um, I'm lo really looking forward on going to, you know, college you know, be, maybe becoming even a teacher, helping others, you know, it's, it definitely has changed, you know, the way, of I, the way I think. And the Archer family, thank you for this wonderful gift you guys have given us, and I appreciate it, thank you. <laughs> Zatina, are you here today? Zatina Harry. I'd like to also introduce one of our staff members, and again, it was difficult to pick one teacher to give a few words. As you saw in the video, and uh, as you interact within our room, 
you see easily that our teachers have a heart for students. And um, when, we, when we hire them, we certainly have that conversation because, again, making connections and building relationships is key. Miss Ryan, I'd like to introduce Tamelia Ryan. Uh, she is a science teacher at, across the street. Miss Ryan? Um, a week or two ago, when Mr. Grieve asked me if I would speak on behalf of the faculty, I was honored and uh, kind of surprised. I haven't been here very long, and I wasn't sure if he knew that I never spoke in front of a group before other than my students. So, But that's how it is at Archer. He believes in you. He doesn't ask, you know, have you done this before? How can you do this? How will you do this? He just he lets the teachers teach the way they need to. And that's how we are with the students, too. We believe in our students, and we know all of our students are tremendous. And I've taught elsewhere before coming here. I taught for several years at a small school far away from here. But I just, I never really felt like I fit in. And eventually, after trying lots of different things to get my heart into it, sponsoring student council, there's a lot of things. I kept trying to feel like I fit in there, but I never really did. So eventually, I just decided I'd just try something different. So I resigned and moved and worked other places for a while, but then I started missing students. I missed being in the classroom and seeing the great things that students do and seeing our future. So I became a substitute teacher and subbed at a lot of different schools, but then one day I had avoided substituting at alternative schools because everyone knows you hear alternative and you think, mm. but so I decided I'd give it a try. So I subbed at Archer and immediately just fell in love with the atmosphere there. It was tremendous. And I told Mr. Grief I would like a job there someday. <laughs> and here I am. And I want to thank you very much for taking a chance on me. And we take, you know, sometimes we take for granted how great we have it. It's so, such a small building that, you know, if any teacher has any kind of problem that they, not necessarily a problem, but can't find a way to help a student, at the end of the day, we just all come out in the hall and talk about it and we figure it out. It's tremendous. It is an awesome place to work. And if I won the lottery tomorrow, I would not stop teaching. If you look back over the years, this program and the vision for the program has been coming forward. It takes on many, many different uh, shapes and sizes and pieces. So many great teachers have helped make uh, this vision come forward as well. Uh, I want to recognize Mr. Dean Alexander. Dean, will you please stand? Let the group thank him. What a <clears throat> I don't think Dean and I ever really graduate. Uh, Dean retired a few years ago, but he may be busier now than ever before. So, Dean, thank you for your contribution to this program. I've asked two other very special teachers to address you and to, again, share their personal experiences in serving this very special group of young people. You heard me talk about after-school program, tutoring. Uh, we're going to hear a little bit about a program of that nature that carried a special name, Alpha Omega. Uh, Pam Brown has uh, been a partner in this from the beginning and Pam I really thank you and I want you to come and stand here by me and uh, we welcome your comments as well you heard us talk about the uh, the Washington tour our heritage tour if you will Mr. Thomas Pittman provides enormous leadership to that program and Tom if you'll come and stand by uh, Pam I'd like for you to follow her comments and then I will introduce um, one of the family members and get her perspective as well. Ms. Pam Brown. I met John almost 23 years ago and it became apparent almost immediately to me that he has a sincere concern for kids in need. He really cares about them. John wants all kids to play on a level playing field, but we as educators know 
that a lot of times this just does not happen without some form of intervention, and John has provided that intervention for the Springdale school system. Uh, he has supported so many and funded so many of our at-risk programs in Springdale, which have not only helped students uh, be successful in school, but have also helped them raise their self-esteem, which we all know is extremely important. Um, thanks to John, we now have tutoring programs in 23 of our 29 schools. Uh, these programs are very successful. The grades are monitored from quarter to quarter, and the grades just constantly surprise me because they keep coming up. Um, John supports programs like this one here in Springdale and other states in the United States, but we are so extremely thankful that he came to Springdale. So John, thank you from the bottom of our hearts for all that you do for our Springdale kids, and thank you for leveling the playing field for our kids here in Springdale. Um, in my opinion, for what it's worth, no one deserves this honor more than you do. Thank you. I'm feeling pretty old. This used to be a hardware store back when I first started teaching, and I'm totally amazed at this facility and the program. I, maybe I want to transfer, not really Dr. Brown, but <laughs> <laughs> this is just really amazing. Uh, when I think of the archers, I see caring stewards. That was the first word that popped in my head, who have touched too many lives to count. I first knew of the archers through their support with an alternative learning class at Central Junior High. I was amazed at the contributions provided by private monies to fund programs in the Springdale District. When Central was invited to participate in the Colonial Williamsburg Tour Program in 1997, I met the archers through Mr. Dean Alexander. I was so excited to get to go on this trip. I couldn't contain myself. I had never been on a trip like that either, and I'm sure Mr. Archer remembers I couldn't contain myself. He's probably going, what is this guy? But I was so thankful to get that opportunity. The Colonial Experience has touched over a thousand students in the Springdale since its inception in 1992 here, just in Springdale alone, not to count the schools in Oklahoma, Kansas, and New York. I have personally seen countless students' lives enriched through their opportunities only made possible by the Archer's generosities. The Colonial Experience changes individuals' perspectives, not only about history, but also about life. Velma Archer was such an involved, caring advocate for the students in Springdale. Having her name on this building is a true tribute to her honor and her commitment to the students in Springdale, and I said I wasn't gonna get emotional there, so I'm gonna move on. Uh, John and Linda Archer continue this valuable work in our schools today, and we just love you to death. And I have had the privilege of experiencing firsthand the benefit of some of the many projects the Archers have supported. In addition to the Williamsburg trip, thousands of students also have had the opportunity to experience a summer camp and given the chance to do so. And the name of the camp is Five Mile Camp, and it's at Quapaw, Oklahoma, just across the uh, Kansas border. Actually, it's right behind the casino, which was interesting uh, <laughs> because I knew the camp before the, okay, I shouldn't have brought that up. Okay. <laughs> the, but what happened was some of my parents got lost going to the camp to pick their kids up and went to the casino, so it was funny. Uh, but the camp was there way before the casino. The camp offers outdoor fun with animals such as horses, buffalo, cows. Uh, they have awesome ropes. They have an Olympic-sized swimming pool. They have a, uh, I, Matt was telling me they were going to build a nature uh, center, and I can't wait for that because I've, I don't know if I hinted at that along or how that all changed, but I love that idea. At the end of each camp, the students put on a rodeo, and I've watched this camp grow over the years to become a modern 21st century facility, and the Archers and Susan certainly have had a lot to do with that, but it's just a marvelous facility. On behalf of all the teachers, the students, Dean Alexander, Lisa Spears, Joan Three, Verna Rucker, and she's here, Metzer, uh, Rebecca McDonald, Winfield Watson, and myself, I want to thank the Archers and all the people who have made this possible from the bottom of my heart. 
Words will never express the gratitude we all feel for what you all have done in the Springdale Schools Dis School District, the teachers, and most importantly, the students. The Williamsburg Colonial trip will always be a big part of my life, and your friendship has meant everything to me, and I thank you so much. Uh, I want to speak just real quick to just the students. As civics American history teacher, I have to teach citizenship. This is the biggest example of citizenship being displayed that I can think of. George Bush's thousand points of light. I always think of Mr. Archer, one of those thousand points, and that program still goes on, and I still think that. So one of the things I want you guys to think about after this is over and today, what can you do to give back to your community? Like maybe the park. Uh, I heard they're fixing to put in a, another K through uh, or a preschool somewhere near here. That's an opportunity. Uh, doing something with this park or, the, or the, the, there's a neighborhood back here. There's an elderly center right here. But there's other things that you kids can do. And they just love kids to death. And you guys could give back to your community like we're trying to give to you. Uh, you know you guys are loved and you guys can love other people and spread that. And it's very, very contagious. And I want to give you the credit for starting that. Okay, thanks. Well, I thank you since it has been a family affair. It really has been a family affair all along. <clears throat> I, I get to work with the Archer family members in many ways. I want to ask Susan to come and uh, stand here with me. This is Susan Gant, uh, uh, John's daughter, and Susan has been a true partner with us. She's been an employee of the school district. Uh, she's been right in the middle of our stretches and pulls and every effort to get, get, get better, but she's really helped us think through this process all along and how we can best personalize services to kids. Please recognize Susan. First of all, thank you, Dr. Rollins, for being patient. Um, he's not an easy battle to conquer, so I really appreciate that, that patience. I'd like to first address the three young children that came up here. Phenomenal job. It takes a lot to stand before a crowd of people, and I'm very impressed. What that says to me is you have some great teachers that have spent some time with you. And I want to one more time uh, give them a round of applause for their effort. <laughs> and Bradley, is it Bradley? Brandon, I'm sorry. Brandon, um, if Mr. Archer had his way, he'd be wearing his blue jeans right now. <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> Uh, before I, I wrote this wonderful speech, and then I've heard everybody talk, and, and it's exactly verbatim what I put in my speech, and I don't know how that happened because I think great minds work alike. Um, the Archer family has had a wonderful relationship with the, Baxter, or with the Springdale School District. Springdale School District has a unique desire and devotion to each and every child. I know that... Dr. Rollins told you it was each child, but you had one leader in the very beginning who is not here, and he used to repeat to us daily. And those of you who remember the big Indian, you'll know who I'm talking about. It's whatever it takes. Whatever it takes is how we get them through. This school district has had a track record of doing whatever it takes to reach each child. And for that, we are honored as the Archer family. And thank you, Springdale Schools. And I'm not just saying Dr. Rollins, because he is a great leader. But a great leader surrounds himself with great people. And all of you working together and working with this Archer family has been an honor for us. And we thank you. Guys, boys, I hate to do this to you, but you have to be recognized. So. So everybody's kind of understanding who's here. This is Mr. John Archer. 
This is his wife, Linda, his son, Michael, son, Matthew, and his grandchildren, Jackson, Garrett, Thomas, and Tyler. Thomas and Tyler are actually graduates of Springdale School District. And we thank you guys for coming. And Judy. <laughs> and there may be some confusion because you hear Velma Archer and um, we are deeply honored, all, each of us are deeply honored that her name is on this building because she was devoted to children although we lost her uh, five years ago. And actually she was on her way to feed children when we lost her. So to have her name out here, and Thomas, you got emotional. To have her name out here is a great honor and we wanna say thank you for that. Our family says thank you for that. I also wanna tell you kids one other thing. I keep hearing them say you have a second chance, you may have made a mistake, there are no mistakes. It's ironic that you're in this building because this building was more than a hardware store. And any of you that are old enough can remember Saturday mornings and the great people that gathered here in their bib overalls to discuss their businesses. They didn't make mistakes. They made changes in their life to become successful. Those men that were here on those Saturday mornings discussing their businesses and their small entrepreneurial activities became the great leaders in our nation. One of those men, without the leadership of some teachers teaching in an alternative manner, would never have done anything more than just go buy a sanitation truck and run it up and down the streets. That's all he wanted to do. He didn't even want to graduate from high school. His teachers, recognizing the greatness that was within him, said, you're not making mistakes. Let's take those choices you're making and build on them. And they continued to build. That man went on to graduate from college and then law school. That man said, you guys made an investment in me. It's time for your return. He took that return and he invested in other children, other youth, and created a world where they would become successful. It was without that ingenuity of each teacher taking the qualities that they found in him to create a great man. Ironically, all those men that gathered here on Saturday morning when I was that young man's age had the same history. None of you have made a mistake. And I want to say that loud and clear. Not one of you in your lifetime has ever made a mistake. You've made a choice that you need to grow on. It was a learning lesson. That is what is fabulous about this building. That is what has been fabulous with our relationship with Dr. Rollins. Never a mistake, has it been? Have we ever made a mistake? <laughs> <laughs> We may have had some lessons and we've built upon them. While this may be an honor, it is actually an honor and we want to honor Springdale Schools for your commitment, your devotion, your sight in each child, whatever it takes for each child. Thank you. Yeah, Alexis and Heidi.
She's talking. So we'll start with cut the ribbon. Let me, let me share this piece of memorabilia that I know John will be very proud of. From our school district, in recognition of the outstanding advocacy for at risk students of the Springville School District and John and Velma Archer and their significant support of education programs that have enriched and truly changed the lives of our students now and in the future and with sincere and deep appreciation for the many years of exemplary partnership with our school system, we now hereby dedicate this facility to be officially known as the John and Velma Archer Learning Center.